Hello, I'm Reverend Neely Hicks, and I'm happy to be with you this day. It's a beautiful day in Tennessee. I have some announcements to make. Easter Sunday worship is going to be in the sanctuary. This is going to mean that we all social distance and that we wear masks and that all of us who are eligible get vaccinated. Please, if you've not gotten vaccinated already, go to vaccinate.tn.gov. Make your appointment today. The eligibility is opening up for more and more of us. We have some prayer concerns. Um, we pray especially for all of those who are feeling lonely during this time. It's been a long, lonely year for many of us. And so we just wanna hold one another in community and pray for one another. We pray for Carmen, who is back at the Rehabilitation Center after suffering her stroke. For Margaret, for Bobby's friend, Carol, who lost her mom this week. For Nathaniel, who had another oncology visit this week, whose grandmother has been sick and with whom we celebrate a birthday for him tomorrow. Um, last year, we didn't know if he was going to make it to his birthday been and here he is one year later having survived and we thank God for that. We also celebrate that Joanne is having another great grandchild so congratulations. Today we celebrate Don Maven's birthday. Happy birthday Don. Nathaniel Bone's birthday tomorrow. Angela Frierson's birthday on March the 24th. Happy birthday Angie. Valerie Stringer's birthday is on March 27th, and so we say happy birthday, Valerie. We have a lot that we have to be grateful for, so let us thank God. Holy God, thank you for another day. Thank you for all of the people in this community. We lift them up to you, God, for any who are suffering. Help us be relievers of suffering. Help us be companions along the journey. Bring your healing, your mercy, your grace, and we pray, God, that you bless this time together in Christ's holy name. Amen. As a community, Glencliff has suffered perhaps more than ever before in this last year. Who we were when we were last together is not who we are today. We've suffered loss through death and through separation. At times like this, it might seem like the whole world is just crashing down on us and changing in ways like never before. Just this week, we saw how a man who was broken tried to heal his brokenness by taking things out on innocent Asian women. The way to heal our inner brokenness is not by destroying other people, it's through going deep enough inside of ourselves in supportive community and with the aid of those who can help lead us to healing. The prophet Jeremiah was living in a time when things felt that way as well, like things were just worse than ever, I'm sure. He was seeing things like children being burnt as offerings to gods that people had created themselves. Can you imagine? So what did he do? He spoke a prophetic word. He laid out a new vision of how things could and should be. I'm going to share with you a lectionary passage from today and share my screen so that you can see the passage before you. It comes from Jeremiah 31 verses 31 through 34. The days are surely coming, says the Lord when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them and I will write it on their hearts and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me. From the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, 
for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. That's a good word. And for us here today, it is a word that encourages us. The days are surely coming. This is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days. I will put my law within them and I will write it on their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people. Let's take a moment and reflect on that and write that within our hearts. The law within us. God will be our God. We shall be God's people. What is the law? The law is this. It's the law that Jesus reminded those who came his way. Love the Lord thy God with all, their, all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. This is the law that shall be written on our hearts, not just in our minds, but having dropped down deep into our hearts so that it can be embodied in our actions and in our words. If we care more about our neighbors than ourselves, then maybe sometimes we have to flip it and we have to remember to love ourselves into being the fullest person that we can be. When this law is written on our hearts, things change in society. Cornell West said, justice is what love looks like in public. So when God's love for self and neighbor is written on the heart, we should see justice in the public sphere. When we do not see justice, we as Christians are called to speak. I'm going to share a portion of the United Methodist Social Principles with you. And I'll share my screen so that, that you can see that as well. It has to do with the political community. The social principles are us, um, for us as United Methodists, they're ways that put into practice our faith in ways that are relevant today to society. This one comes from uh, paragraph 164.a. We hold governments responsible for the protection of the rights of the people to free and fair elections and to the freedoms of speech, religion, assembly, communications media, and petition for redress of grievances without fear of reprisal, to the right to privacy, and to the guarantee of the rights to adequate food, clothing, shelter, education, and health care. Blockades and embargoes that seek to impede the flow or free commerce of food and medicines are practices that cause pain and suffering, malnutrition, or starvation with all its detrimental consequences to innocent and non-combatant civilian populations, especially children. We reject these as instruments of domestic and foreign policy, regardless of political or ideological views. The form and the leaders of all governments shall be determined by exercise of the right to vote guaranteed to all adult citizens, all. We also strongly reject domestic surveillance and intimidation of political opponents by governments in power and all other misuses of elective or appointive offices. The use of detention and imprisonment for the harassment and elimination of political opponents or other dissidents violates fundamental human rights. Furthermore, the mistreatment or torture and other cruel, inhumane, and degrading treatment or punishment of persons by governments for any purpose violates Christian teaching and must be condemned, must be condemned and or opposed by Christians and churches wherever and whenever it occurs. The church regards the institution of slavery practice and commission of genocide, war crimes, crimes against humanity, and aggression as infamous and atrocious evils. 
Such evils are destructive of humanity, promote impunity, and therefore must be unconditionally prohibited by all governments and shall never be tolerated by the church. Again, this is from the um, Book of Discipline, the Social Principles, and if you want to get a copy of it, you can do that. So we're going, I'm going to ask a question now. How does protest differ from the prophetic witness? Is there a difference? As some spoke in class this morning, we know that some people have the gift of prophecy and they lead others into that public sphere, raising their voices together. When we see something that is wrong or something that is not right, we must do all we can. It's our responsibility. And God gives us the grace to be response able, able to respond. We speak and we live into the vision of the beloved community that God so desires for the world. We prophesy with our actions, our words, where we spend our money, how we care for one another, and how we care for ourselves. We come to know God's vision for beloved community through prayer, communion, reading scriptures, being in worship, and devoting ourselves to God. When something's not right, we get angry. That's human emotion. When something is not right, we become angry. What we do with anger means everything. We can be hate and return hate for hate, or we can lift up the vision that God has given us, that God has written on our hearts, and we can do those things which help actualize that vision into being and into reality. This is the way of Christ. This is the way that we build God's kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. I hope that this word has encouraged you today and that this week you will look at how you lift up those within the Asian community who are suffering after losing innocent lives this week out of the, the racism and the misogyny, the hate of women that was instilled in that one man. Let us do everything within our power to move one another towards love and reject hate. Let us spend money in the Asian community, in black community, in impoverished communities, in all of those places where our money speaks our hearts, where it speaks the beloved community into being. Let us live this day and this week as God's beloved children, building community.